I'm assuming I should All right. Now we're live. Hi, everybody. I'm hey Sean, or Snow, if you might know me. And I have a uh, very special guest with me today to talk about Street Fighter Third Strike. Why don't you, uh... <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Derek Neal. I'm the producer on Street Fighter Three Third Strike Online Edition. Awesome. Uh, so, Derek, we have lots of questions. And uh, we've been watching people play the game through and through all day. Uh, we, we have a, a nice little direct feed set up. And uh, tell us a little bit about what we've been seeing so far. I mean, what are we showing new here? I mean, this is one of the first times that we really, really showed off this game and what it's going to be about besides, or since when? Comic-Con, right? Yeah, since Comic-Con, absolutely. Uh, so it's been almost a year now uh, since we announced this game. And uh, I'm really excited to finally get to be able to talk about all of the awesome things that we're doing. Uh, this may be a $15 downloadable, but there's more content in this game than in a lot of $60 like disc-based fighting games that you would see. Uh, I mean, what you're seeing here is the arcade-perfect gameplay. This is actually the uh, most arcade-perfect version of the game to have ever been released. And uh, all of the other things that we are adding to it are things that just take this classic game and make it better. They're trappings, they're trimmings, they're things around it, extra gameplay modes, things like that. So the gameplay is unchanged, but then there's all this cool stuff that we've layered on top of it. That's really cool. So, what are some of the cool? Well, tell tell me about like the the various screen modes. So we were saying it's the arcade perfect mode. So so what else is there to that? What else do we have? What I'll else is in the game? Details you want. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, well, let's start with uh, just some of the stuff that you can see on the screen right now. So uh, among other things, there's the obviously the HD filtering. You can shut that off. It's completely optional. Uh, there's also a whole ton of different options. There's an arcade cabinet view. You can turn scan lines on or off. There's multiple different graphics filters you can choose from. There's a widescreen mode. Uh, and you can just turn all that stuff off if you don't want it as well. Um, and display it in its original low-def glory, if that's what you prefer. Uh, in addition, on the right-hand side of the screen right now, uh, you'll see our dynamic challenges. So uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of these things. There's different ones for different modes. There's even more of them for online mode. And uh, they basically reward you for doing cool things in the game. So you parry something, or you do a super, you do a big combo, whatever. Uh, you'll see a little flashing update over there. When those things update, they give you vault points, which we use to unlock content. Uh, Is that they also multiplayer and single player? Uh, yes, yeah, multiplayer and single player, as well as some of the additional gameplay modes, like uh, the trials modes and things like that. That's cool. That's really uh, cool. So what are some of the unlockables then? <laughs> we have an absolutely massive vault. There's uh, over 200 pieces of unlockable content, ranging from movies like uh, the original game uh, intro and the character endings and things like that, to uh, HD remix themes of all of the characters' music themes, to uh, art and stage backgrounds and just all kinds of stuff. Over 200 things you can unlock. So, when you unlock those, can you place them into the game to I mean use? So, I mean, aside from like looking at art, but like some of the remixes and things like that, yeah, can you yeah. choose to use those? Yeah, absolutely. So the remix theme music, for example, can be enabled for any character. Uh, you can also just play with the original theme music if you don't like our remixes. Uh, we've also remixed the main menu music and the character select music. But once again, the original songs are also in there. So if you don't like them, you can just set it back to the default original Third Strike music. That's really cool. So, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, you know the the feature set that we're doing uh, for uh, for our online stuff. I mean, what really makes this game online? I mean, it seems it's more than just multiplayer. Oh yeah, absolutely. One of the biggest things is uh, GGPO integration, which is something that the uh, community has been begging for for a long time. It's a uh, third-party uh, middleware that masks lag and makes for near lagless online play. It's very, very effective. We've been having a blast with it in the office. Uh, in addition, we have uh, integrated tournament support. We have uh, eight-player spectator matches, uh, player match quarter style. So, uh, you know, the winner stays, the loser rotates. And, uh, of course, spectator mode built into that. Uh, we have replay saving and sharing, like uh, Street Fighter Four. So you can save replays of your matches. You can upload your favorite ones to uh, a match database that's then searchable by keywords and uh, player ranks and skill ratings and all kinds of stuff. And really cool. you can take those same replays and upload them straight to YouTube from within the game. So uh, that's another really cool online feature. So when it goes straight to YouTube, is that your account? Uh, we're not actually talking about much about the YouTube implementation so far, but uh, yes, on the PS3 version, you can upload it to your own YouTube account. That's really cool. I'm excited about that. So, uh, as far as like finding matches and everything else, is there going to be a list of like you know what's going on, who's who's the best of this week for each character or something like that? Aside from all the searchable stuff, uh, there will How be is a that filtered. 
Well, there will be a, uh, well, there's a couple different things. The match database, you can search by player rank and match grade and, you know, uh, how recently it was uploaded and all kinds of stuff to put together a playlist. Uh, we've also got, you can save, replace your hard drive, your own or other ones that you search for and download. Uh, and then we've also got this nifty watch with friends feature, which basically is a lobby that you can go into with all your friends and then play a series of replays back and talk with your friends about what's going on in the replays. Oh, so cool. for example, if there's a tournament over the weekend, you can download all the replays from the tournament, hop into a lobby, watch it with your friends and talk about it. Uh, so there's just lots of cool stuff like that. That's really cool. I'm gonna let these guys see the game a little bit. I'm gonna switch uh, the view over. So uh, we're switching over to uh, gameplay footage now. There we go, we'll let these guys see it. So this is, this is in, uh, well, what is this mode right here? This is an arcade perfect. This is, this looks like it's got the, uh, the HD filter on it, or one of them. Yes, so uh, this is our crisp filter. We actually have uh, three different filters. There's crisp, smooth, and none. We also have scan lines on and off in an arcade cabinet mode, uh, which bends the screen and distorts it in the way that an old CRT would. Uh, it looks really nice in that mode as well. That's really cool. So, uh, will you be able to see, like, so if you're playing multiplayer, uh, you know, you're versus someone, are you going to be able to see what they're doing as far as their, their vault points and everything else as well? Yes. Uh, so the two sides are for player one and player two. So, uh, you know, right now there's only the one guy playing, which is uh, which is why you see the uh, it only on the right side. But if you have two people signed in with two different profiles or if you're playing online, uh, then you'll see each side, one is for each player. So player one stuff will show up on the left and player two stuff will show up on the right. All right, guys, too, if you have any questions uh, for uh, for Derek, go ahead and ask away in the uh, in the uh, YouTube stream comments there. We're watching that right now. So uh, go ahead and ask away. Yeah. It's a little delayed. All right, so uh, <laughs> I, I see one that I want to go ahead and answer. Am I seeing frame rate loss, or is this just the stream? Oh, that's the stream. Uh, so it's the stream, yeah. Uh, there are no loss of frames, and in fact, we've had uh, expert tournament players come in to verify that the game is as arcade perfect as it's possible to make it. Uh, people that are really big fans of the series might know that some of the uh, uh, previous ports, like the PS2 and Xbox versions, had some differences from the original arcade version. We've uh, actually gone back, isolated the cause of those, and fixed them all. So uh, the game is actually more arcade perfect than any other version that has been released on console so far. Wow. Here's, here's a good question that you, uh, you can answer. When's the release date? <laughs> uh, so all we're saying at this point is it's coming out this summer. This summer. Well, summer can't come soon enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, what was the price again? I mean, so I see a few people asking. I think they're just tuning in. I know we talked about it before. $15. $15. $15. So 1200 Microsoft points. Yes, it is on PS3. Awesome. To answer uh, N84 Central. So uh, they're asking, uh, can you talk a little bit about training mode? Training mode. Uh, so we've got two different training modes, normal training and parrying training. Uh, we've actually added a lot of little touches that are things that people have been asking for. So uh, the normal training mode has uh, a lot of additional things. One of them is the ability to uh, save a state like in an emulator and then reload it later. So you can save yourself in the corner with a certain amount of meter and the opponent's stun bar in a certain place and then reload it back there. Of course, we've got all the other options that you're used to from a training mode. Uh, two player, you know, the ability to have someone else in there, the ability to play against the CPU, the ability to select different uh, parrying or block options like auto parry, auto block, random parry, things like that. Make them crouch, stand up, jump. Uh, the ability to record and playback inputs, uh, to practice parrying things, things like that. Uh, so very robust parry mode, uh, as well as the ability to see all the stun numbers, damage numbers, things like that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, Someone's asking about a retail disc. Retail disc. Uh, no, at the moment, it's only going to be available digitally on uh, PSN and Xbox Live Arcade. Uh, will there be the possibility of being able to have system select options? Uh, yes, the, uh, the system direction options are also in this version, uh, unlockable as they were in previous home versions. Yeah. Very cool. It takes a little second for the, uh, the comments to refresh occasionally, so... Uh, let's see. Is there a regular training mode in addition to the training mode? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means. There are two training modes, and then there's also a trials mode. Uh, the trials walk you through parrying from very easy to very difficult. 
Uh, it starts out with parry like a single hit fireball, then a two hit fireball, uh, ending with five hit uh, Ryu's uh, Shinku Adoken. But then it gets even more complicated and starts parrying all kinds of weird supers, red parrying, and it actually culminates in uh, Evo moment number 37, parrying all of Chun-Li's super, jumping up, and then finishing her off with the combo. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. That's pretty nuts. Yeah. So, uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the art? I know some of the yeah. art that we have in the vault specifically was actually from the community. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so there's largely three different kinds of art in this game. Uh, the first is the brand new stuff that you might see on the character select screen or the main menu or the title screen. Uh, that stuff's been drawn by Stanley Lau, also known as Art Germ on DeviantArt, and it is gorgeous. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, the second kind of art is the original art from the first game. So uh, that stuff is uh, was originally in much lower resolution because, you know, in the arcade version they had space limitations and lower right. resolution screens. We actually went back, found the original art, re-scanned it in in super high def and replaced those with mega high def of the same images. Uh, and the third kind of art that's in this game is uh, is fan art and udon art and stuff like that. Yeah. So there is actually, we had a, a fan art contest and uh, one of the winners of that fan art contest came, came by and was able to see his art in the game in the unlockable vault. He was oh, very really excited cool. about it. Yeah, he was here earlier. Who was that? Um, I don't remember. Why are you putting uh, me on the spot like this? What, what was the art, though? Uh, he did the Remy piece. He did the, oh, the second place Remy piece. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, not only is he in the credits, but his, uh, his art is physically in the vault. So all of that art is used for uh, two purposes. One is for situations like here, where you see you know, all of the up art that's on the, the UI screens and things like that. But then also, it's all unlockable in full resolution, full screen glory in the vault. You know, along with the movies and the character select themes and the stage backgrounds and stuff. That's really cool. Hang on, I'm going to go see if I can get the chat to refresh a little bit. I know all they're right. talking. Yeah, I saw someone ask earlier, is Gil going to be playable? Uh, so the answer is yes, Gil is going to be playable. He's unlockable. And he's not available in any kind of ranked or tournament modes, only strictly in casual matches. Bear with us a second here. I think Snow is trying to refresh the chat and seems to have frozen. Well, uh, while he's doing this, okay, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, are stages from New Generation and Second Impact in the Unlockable Vault? Uh, no, they are not. Uh, so you have the stage backgrounds from this one. You can go view them and stuff. Unfortunately, not the art, not the stage backgrounds from previous games. Though. That would be cool, but uh, they're not available right now. Yeah. So switch back to Unity Chat. I yeah, know. I agree. I agree. I Any glitches removed? That's a really good question. Yes, uh, is the answer to that question. So there are a couple of game-breaking bugs that were in the original arcade version, which uh, are fixed in this one. Yes. Uh, so big fans about the, uh, the game might know that in the original arcade edition, uh, if Ken killed Makoto with a neutral throw, the game would crash. That is fixed. Uh, so the game no longer crashes in those settings. Uh, there is another one uh, where if Remy uh, parried uh, Yurian's Aegis Reflector and then did a neutral throw, uh, he would get hit out of his throw by the Aegis Reflector and then he would freeze in that position and be stuck. Uh, that bug is also fixed. So there's a couple of game-breaking crashes and freezes and things that, uh, that are fixed. But otherwise, any uh, changes that actually impact gameplay, those things are as they were in the original arcade version. Yeah. Very cool. Looks like uh, a few people are asking about all sorts of glitches. Yeah, well, I mean, the ones that we just talked about. You mean which ones are still in the game? Uh, if you mean which ones are still in the game, uh, one good example is uh, uh, Goki's or Akuma's forward and middle punch. Uh, was unthrowable in the original arcade version because he was actually considered in the air during the move. Uh, it's that way in this one again. That was a bug, but it is uh, a popular one. It's still in this version. Uh, another example is uh, Q. I don't know if people know this or not, but he's actually unthrowable in the original arcade version when he's transitioning from a crouching to a standing state. Uh, and that was also fixed in the home versions, but is uh, is still present in this one, just like the original arcade version. Are unblockables in? Yes. Unblockables are in exactly as in the original arcade version. Yeah. That's really cool. So, Can you uh, talk about the downloadable content section? Uh, 
Yes. No, unfortunately, we can't. It exists. That's uh, that's all I can tell you right now. Interesting. All right. I. That's new to me too. Someone's someone's eyes and ears are out there. Uh, so this question's popping up, and I'm sure you probably can't talk about it. But uh, any chance for a uh, PC release? Uh, there is not going to be one immediately at launch, but uh, I can't rule out anything for the future. Very cool. So if you guys keep asking for it, uh, we'll send you to, we'll send you Derek's way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so someone's asking, are the unblockables like the Denjin Hadoken? Uh, no, the unblockables that we're talking about are actually situations where you set up a projectile on one side of the screen, and you do an attack from the other side of the screen, and the guy can't block both ways. So uh, Yurian can set him up with his Aegis Reflector, or O can do it with his Yagudama Super, uh, and a couple of other instances like that. Very cool. So uh, there's also a lot of, uh, I don't think I've mentioned this, but there's lots of little... Uh, touches that we've done to this game just to make it awesome. So if you look here at the top, you'll see you can set your controls on the character select screen. Not only that, it's the easy kind of control select where it's just press buttons, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you're done. Uh, so it's something very fans have been asking for for a long time. You can now set your controls on the character select screen during a match and after a match. There's also a quick rematch feature and uh, random character select, which is something that's been missing from Third Strike forever, but we finally got it. Random character select is available now. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so these guys are just playing uh, one player right now, right? Or are they playing two player? Uh, so I think they're playing two players right now, but only one guy is signed in with a... Uh, with oh, the other that's why. Okay, I was wondering why the uh, the other vault side, or the other uh, set of vault points wasn't showing up on the other side. Right, right, right. Uh, they're asking if you can turn the deck, to, the text to Japanese. Like uh, there is, there is Japanese language support. Yes. Oh, very cool. Uh, How many characters begin unlocked at the start of the game? All of them, except Gil. Nice. When is the game coming out? Summer. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's all I can say. <laughs> Someone says, "Shut up and take my money." Uh, I take checks. Okay. <laughs> How about stage select before playing somebody? Yes, that is in there. Yep. Yeah, if you see anything, just describe it. It's going by pretty quick. Uh, I saw someone ask earlier which colors are available. Uh, all of the colors that were available in the original home versions are available in this one as well. All the original arcade versions, plus the special button combination versions, plus the unlockable ones. Yeah. Very cool. Will the game look good on a small, old deaf TV? Absolutely, the game always looks beautiful on small, old deaf TVs. Uh, that's one of the things people love about it the most. The trick was making it also look beautiful on high def TVs. Right. Uh, which was a little bit trickier. Well, it seems like there's a lot of, there's a lot of options for uh, high def TV owners, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you play it with an arcade stick. <laughs> yes, you can play it with an arcade stick. In fact, we encourage it. That was an interesting question. I don't know why I... Uh... Does does Q have his win quotes? Yes. Yes, Q has his win quotes. And... <laughs> so, uh, you you didn't go back and uh, redo any of the uh, the voices at all. It's just uh, the music. Is there any new voices or sounds that were re redone or... Uh... Nope. Uh, in fact, <laughs> all of the voices and sounds in this are ripped directly out of the original arcade version. They're higher quality and higher fidelity than... Uh, any of the ones in a pre previous console releases. Very cool. Uh, Looks like uh, Sven's right. sneaking around back here. So someone's uh, someone's got a GGPO question that he apparently wants us to answer. I guess I missed it earlier. What is your question about GGPO? Well, while we're waiting for that to go by, let's see. Does Third Strike Online Edition make you popular with the girls? Yes, and if you buy it, it will also make you popular with the <laughs> girls. So please do so. Confirmed. Who remixed the songs? Can you talk about that at all? Yeah, so uh, the vocals are actually done by Adam Tensta, who is a uh, premier Swedish rapper. He's very popular in Europe, and he did an awesome job. If you guys have uh, seen the trailer that we released, that's his music in it. It's really good. Of course, all of the original game's music is still in there, so if you want to play with the OG stuff, that's available as well. Uh, the instrumental remixing was done by a company called Super Sledge. It did a fantastic job as well, and uh, all of the remixed character themes and stuff were done by them as well. Very cool. Uh, let's see. 
There's the GGPO question. GGPO, have you seen an improvement in the netcode now that GGPO is integrated in the game? Uh, versus current GGPO on PC. Oh, I, I see, I see. Uh, yes, I mean, the fact that we're able to put it directly into the game gives us a lot more control over uh, the settings and things like that. So it works beautifully, it plays wonderfully, and uh, the experience is better than any Third Strike experience online that has ever come before. So I think you guys will really be excited with it. Are you able to turn off handicap on the versus screen? Uh, you can. There is a different mode that does not have handicap mode enabled. But there's. Uh, so if you want to not use it, you can go there. But uh, there's not like a toggle or anything. There's not like an option toggle. Or you, you can pull up a mic if you want to join the uh, third strike. Third strike chat. I am so excited to finally be able to talk about this game. It's been so long. Yeah, I can fix that for you. Is there a good reason for no PC version? Uh, we haven't said there's no PC version. We're just saying there's not one right now. Who knows what the future could bring? Oh, have we? Well, well, yeah, right now there's no plans for it. But Yeah, exactly. Keep asking for it. <laughs> Uh, yes, they are. Well, there's two different widescreen modes. Uh, so one of them is a full-on widescreen mode, and in order to make it fit the screen perfectly, when the game is not originally in that uh, aspect ratio, there has to be a little bit of stretching. The backgrounds aren't actually big enough to just reveal them. Uh, but then we also have a secondary widescreen mode. doesn't go quite all the way to the edges, but does maintain the original aspect ratios of everything. So uh, you have your choice between the two. If you want to play it in true fidelity, the original aspect ratios for everything and in widescreen, that option is there. Uh, and if you want it to go all the way to the edges of the screen perfectly, that option is there as well, but there is a little bit of stretching. Interesting. Not at the moment. Yeah. All right. SF3 is a lot better than SF4. I'm excited for this online edition. Us too. <laughs> We're very excited for it. This is uh, one of the deepest, one of the most beloved fighting games uh, that Capcom's ever done. And we really just wanted to do it justice with this release and really create a package that was as awesome as the gameplay is. And that's why you've seen all these things like this quick button select options that you're seeing here and all of the cool stuff that we were talking about earlier, the YouTube integration, the eight player tournament support, the spectator matches, the GGPO integration, the hundreds of trials, the hundreds of challenges. I mean, literally this $15 downloadable more content than a lot of $60 games. Very cool. Uh, about 18 months. We do online two-player training mode. Uh, there is a two-player training mode, but it's offline only. Yeah. Street Fighter 3, fourth strike. If you guys have any more questions, this is your time to answer, or ask it. They're only here to answer for a few more minutes, so maybe the, uh, no, the chat's not frozen. Show them Evo moment number 37. Yes, I did, and ending in Evo moment number 37 to parry uh, Daigo versus Justin Wong. Uh, unfortunately, it's actually streaming from uh, out on the floor at E3, so uh, what you're watching now are uh, actual people attending the event playing the game. Uh, if I had a controller here, I would, uh, more than gladly show you the uh, challenge and even attempt it myself, but uh, unfortunately we can't at the moment. Sorry about that, guys. We have to stick with uh, the show four players. Uh, what players did you consult during development? Uh, I'm not going to name names right now, but uh, when the game comes out, check the credits list. You'll see a lot of names that you might recognize. Also true. Uh, someone asked if you can change the uh, the character selected or back to its original. Uh, we only have the new upgraded one, unfortunately. The original character select art doesn't exist in high enough res version to uh, to be usable on this. But we have all the new art. It looks gorgeous. So uh, that's unfortunately all we're able to offer. So, so why 
of the fonts. Were the sprites edited in any way? Sprites were not edited in any way. And if you want to see them in the original low def glory, you can turn off all the filters and play it that way. I think this console uh, in specific, the one I was allowed to uh, grab the feed from, is a uh, 360 pad version. Oh, is it? Yeah. I know. I went sad too. I, I wanted I wanted the, the stick version, but. Uh, right. Here's the GGPO question to. you missed, and now it's off the screen again. Something about cult something or other. <laughs> Very fast. Uh, any chance of an optional rebalance patch somewhere down the road? Uh, no plans for that currently. I think you were off the whole time. I'm sorry. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did, were you guys able to hear the stuff Sven was saying? I, I don't think he did. I, uh, I, I think his mic was muted. That was my fault. I readjusted it, but I had it off because I... Uh, I was not expecting a the, the surprise visit of. Uh, well, I had a, I had literally a few minutes between now and my next um, meeting, so I figured I'd pop yeah. in and say hi. It does not hi. sound like they could hear you. Sorry. No, uh, well, <laughs> that's all right. They're they're maybe better off. Oh man. All right. Let's see. Uh, Sounds like they still can't hear me. What else we got? So someone asked earlier. I saw it go by. Uh, explain how GGPO works versus other kinds of netcode. So a GGPO actually works by rolling back. So what it does is instead of using input lag or delay where it slows down the game, it lets the game go forward and play, assuming that it's going to stay in sync. And then if it finds out that somewhere along the time it didn't work, it rewinds, recalculates everything, and puts it back where the game really should be at this point. And it does that rapidly a lot. So the end result is that there's no input delay or anything. You might see a little bit of uh, jumping as the frames adjust themselves to keep the game in the correct state where it's supposed to be. But, uh, but basically it means that if you do something with the correct timing, the same timing that you do it offline, it will always work online. Uh, the sacrifice is a little bit of visual jitter. You see the sprites might jitter back and forth a little bit, but uh, it's purely a visual thing and it plays really well. Somebody asked if the filters introduce any sort of input lag. Uh, and, and uh, so they do not. We were, we were very careful to uh, keep the filters from introducing any kind of input lag. We know that was a problem in MVZ2. Uh, like I said earlier, we had lots of professional players come in, check it out, try to make sure that everything was cool. Uh, we also had a bunch of debug tools that we used to look at the uh, actual time it was taking it to render things on the screen and make sure that those were always, no matter what settings of filters you used, under the acceptable levels. So. And somebody asked, can this be PSN, please? Of course it's on PSN. It's yes. on PSN and XBLA. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if this is a question you can answer. I've seen it go by a few times. Uh, will there be, be an option to listen to the character themes from all three versions? From all or three just, versions. The, uh, just the arcade? So the only things that's in the game right now are the remixed character themes that we did for this game, and then the original Third Strike character themes. Gotcha. The uh, second impact and new generation character themes are unfortunately not available. All right. I see a DLC option taught Capcom. Uh, we can't talk about it right now. All right. We Sorry. got time for one more question that we're going to have to uh, we have to make room for our next interview. Sorry. So I guess too, uh, is there anything that you'd want to add on additionally that we haven't talked about? Just that this game is an amazing value that has been deliberately made to take into account all of the things that the Capcom uh, fan and community have always wanted. Things like the easy button selects, the random character selects, the YouTube integration, the GGPO integration, all the tournament streamlining, the tons of different gameplay modes. All of this stuff is stuff that the fan base has been cheering for and begging for for a long time. If you want to see this in future fighting games, I can't tell you enough, please vote with your wallets. That is the best way that we're uh, going to be able to get this stuff in future games. Let awesome. Capcom know that you want this game, that you want these features in future games by buying this one. Very cool. All right, guys. It's coming out this summer for $15 on XBL and PSN. Uh, Derek, thank you so much for coming by and talking to these guys. Christian, and I'm going to run off to my next meeting, guys. All right. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you're looking forward to the game. I'll see you all later.
Yeah. <laughs> 